Hey, welcome. Uh, we are going to be documenting uh, this Dungeon 23 using the Weird Dungeon. Uh, so this is the first video for that. Um, I've already done uh, the first level, uh, sorry, the first room for the first level. Uh, but I want to record at least uh, the second level and hopefully kind of keep doing these videos. I would like to do them daily, but probably not just because of life. But I'll keep doing them and updating them from here on out. But we'll continue to talk about each room as we make them um, and, and record them. So this is the second day, which means we already have room one. We're going to be doing uh, recording room two and go from there. But first, I want to talk about what Weird Dungeon is. Uh, Weird Dungeon uses uh, the Weird Framework by Disaster Tourism. Uh, we've rewritten some of the rules here and there to fit uh, kind of more what we wanted out of the game. But really, the bulk of this uh, game is about procedurally generating a dungeon based off of D66 lists and the imagination of everybody at the table. So the way you can play this game is either as a you know, regular kind of GM game, where you have the one GM who is going to do all the, the random rolling to start building the dungeon, or a GM full game where everybody at the table is essentially taking on parts of being that GM. You all are playing a player as well. You roll the dice, get the information, and you all start telling the story together about what this dungeon is and, and building that narrative together. So when you start, uh, you choose kind of do you want a GM game or a GM full. Once you figure that out, you then decide uh, or you find out, okay, uh, how many rooms are there at each level? And it's very simple. Uh, you just take the level number plus uh, another two additional rooms plus a start and a finish room. Um, the starting room is kind of where you move into, and the finish room is wherever the uh, level boss is going to be that you all have to fight. Um, and, of course, where that's all going to be, you figure out as you kind of play the game. Or if you're, of course, a GM, you'll design this ahead of time and, and get it all prepped. Uh, so for this case, uh, it's five rooms to begin with, so that's what we know that we have. The second thing you're going to do is find out how many factions, NPC factions, there are uh, going to be in this dungeon. And you take the number of players plus one. So we're going to, for our sake of Dungeon 23, we're going to assume there are three players. So that's going to give us four factions. And that's the different NPC factions that are going to be dispersed throughout this dungeon. And again, that's all going to be, ran they're going to show up randomly as you roll. So they're not predetermined in any way. Uh, for our case, uh, we looked at the D66 list, uh, the faction list, and I'm just using a simple field notes uh, book that's got, um, you know, just a grid layout there to help with that. And I rolled, and our four factions are Kilman's Mercenaries, Rogram's Fist, Exalted Justicars and Heaven's Spear. And these aren't like detailed out anywhere in the book. We just give you the name and you as the players decide who these people are and what are their motivations. Why are they going to be in this dungeon? So I think that's pretty cool. We just want to really write and have evocative things that start to um, tell a story just by the name. Um, and I think that's really important to help kind of spur that imagination. Uh, after that, we determine their relationship with one another. And that's just a simple D6 table. Uh, we rolled on that, and it just simply goes like this. You take the first faction that you rolled, then you roll on the relationship table. In this case, uh, we, I think, let's see, we rolled a, a six. And so we have one, which is uh, Kilman's mercenaries are actively at war with Rogram's fist. So we already have a relationship set up ahead of time between those two. Then we take Rogram's fists, we roll again, and they have a tense alliance with the exalted Justicars. So while they have an alliance, there's something that could tip either way. And that's something the players can use to their advantage as they go throughout the dungeon. Then you take um, Rogram's Fist. We rolled on that, and they're neutral to the Exalted Justicars. The Exalted Justicars have a tense alliance with Heaven's Spear. Uh, 
Yeah, sorry. Exalted Justice cards are neutral to Heaven's Spear. And then we wrap it back around. Uh, we take Heaven's Spear, which is the number four uh, faction, and they have a tense alliance with Kilman's mercenaries. So that's just a simple D6 that we roll as we go through. We are ready to start building the dungeon, and we start with level one. And we have two huge D66 lists, so 72 uh, themes, if you will, uh, just names. And we rolled on that, and we got the Silent Gatehouse. Uh, used, I believe, the first uh, 36 uh, D66 list, rolled a 32, and got Silent Gatehouse. What is a silent gatehouse? And that's for me now to draw out and design. And so I just started going through it and I was like, okay, well, silent gatehouse. What if it is a, um, a, a graveyard of mausoleums, these huge mausoleums, like on a cliff side, and you're walking up to this gatehouse. And that's why it's the silent gatehouse, because of the dead. And then there's just this sense of... Uh, um, you know, quietude about the place and reverence that you're coming up to this gatehouse. Um, after doing that, I kind of have that in my head. I want to go to the trappings D66 list, and that's just a list that gives you kind of, you could roll on it multiple times if you want to, but it's just a way to add smaller nuances uh, to the level. So I just rolled on into it, and we got uh, Banded Iron Doors, which is just saying that where, wherever there's going to be a door that shows up on this level, that's the kind of door that's going to be here on that level. Um, and then I wanted to uh, give it a little bit more uh, like room decorations is, is another. We have basically this section that's just this further list, just more and more stuff for you to roll on. And I rolled on that, and I got decorative chairs and tables. And I was really close to just tossing that out They're like ah, that doesn't quite make sense for this room you know really it's an outdoor area that's going to be leading into the dungeon i was like ah, i don't really think that works but then i started thinking about it it's like no let's let's roll with it let's actually figure out what that could mean here and so i decided like yeah there's all of these like picnic tables and chairs that have been set up all throughout this uh graveyard <laughs> and they're there, vine-covered, as if they had been abandoned. And why is that? What's going on there? I just wanted to include that as just a simple story element that we could probably build off of later. Um, so once I got all that stuff, I went in. Uh, I made the mistake of starting the first part with a Sharpie. And you can see it bled through the back, so I really didn't get a chance to, to use uh, this side of the page, which kind of sucks, but I drew out the uh, first area. So that's the cliff side we've got here. I put in uh, some enemy notes. This is room one. So there's just two living statues, which maybe could be somewhere throughout. Uh, maybe some of these are some uh, statues, or maybe they're on the gate. Haven't decided yet. And ten zombies. There'll be zombies throughout this area. And then I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a secret... Uh, room or secret door that would lead actually to level three of uh, the of the dungeon. So we could completely skip a uh, level two if we wanted to. So we've got a little secret area. Uh, spoilers! Um, and so that's where we have room one. It's that simple and we want to go through it. Now we're going to go to room two. So I'm really just going to uh, move over. What I think I want to do is I'll do the drawing now on this side and any notes for the room. On this side. Uh, what I've decided to do for room two is actually uh, we're going to do this uh, mausoleum here. So while I have it kind of sketched out the size of it here, I decided what I'm going to do instead is uh, use the room size uh, generator that's included uh, with the book. And it's uh, super simple. Basically every room starts as a five by five uh, room. And you can roll either a 1d3, 2d3, or 3d3 per side of the room. And then multiply whatever that result is by 5. And that's how many feet uh, there are in that room. So I think for a mausoleum, we're going to keep it at uh, a 1d3 by 2d3. 
I think that works for what we're going to do. I'm just going to grab my D6 here. I was trying to do a multi-camera setup so then it could like cut to me rolling the dice. I don't think that's going to happen, uh, at least not right now. But you're all going to just trust me that what I roll <laughs> is what I roll. Um, okay, so we're going to do a 1D3 uh, for the short side of the mausoleum. So I rolled a 2. Uh, it gives me a 1, so it's a 5-foot wide mausoleum. I think that'll work. So I'm just going to write this down. Room. Okay, so roll a 2, so it's another 1 plus 6, so 3. Uh, so it gives us 4 by 5. It is a 5 by 20 foot room. Okay. Um, I think that should be okay. I am actually think, just for our sake, I'm going to uh, pop it out to a 15. So I'm not going to necessarily stick wholly with it because sometimes it's like, eh, that might be a little too small. But it kind of gets me close to where I want to be. So now that I know it's a 15 by uh, 20 foot room, mausoleum. And this is going to be where our uh, secret uh, room is going to be. Okay, mausoleum. So this is where our secret room is, and I think this is where we could probably toss in one of our, uh, we could toss in one of our uh, living statues there. So it could be the far back of the room. It's guarding that secret entrance, and of course we're going to throw in a bunch of zombies here as well. And since I've got uh, the thing here, uh, that's what we're going to do. And all of the monster stats uh, for for this game, we keep everything just very uh, generic. There's not specific stats per monster. You just have a general, like, how strong the monster is, and that's going to give you uh, their hit dice and how much damage they do and all that kind of stuff and what it's going to take uh, to hurt them. All of that is in the weird framework. It still uh, uses a lot of their systems to set up. Right now, we're just worried about the dungeon itself. So, over here... Let's do our 15 feet. I realize I can probably fit multiple um, rooms on a on a page. So that's kind of cool. I might I might I don't want I'm not having to I can I can double up. That's nice because <laughs> I was, a, I was thinking they would be, these would be much bigger. So we're gonna say that the entrance is here from the top. I'm gonna put this statue right here down at the bottom and we can have like all of these niches oh drop my thing we can have all these niches uh along the way this is where they could either be zombies maybe they could be skeletons you know whatever and we're just gonna have uh those there put a big s at the bottom for our secret and then I'll just put a no there. S equals secret room or secret entrance. Um, and that's it. I mean, honestly, uh, I've also already rolled ahead of time to see how many um, traps might be uh, on this level. There's a 5% chance per uh, level. Uh, that there will be traps. So the first level, there's a 5% chance there'll be traps. Second level, there'll be a uh, 10% chance, and I think up to like 25%, 30% chance. And that's where it caps off uh, per thing. And I rolled on that and didn't get any. Uh, you could roll per room instead of uh, per level. So you could say every room there's a 5% chance. So if I were to do that, let me go ahead and grab some percentile while we're here why not um and also percentile i'm gonna say it here now zero double zero is a hundred all right there's no other way to look at it <laughs> uh i rolled a 46 so there's no uh traps in this room either just the statue and the zombies that's it right that's room two done for dungeon uh 23 um Real fast, real simple. I know I talked for a long time, but this is just kind of the buildup, talking about the two rooms. So here we have uh, the Silent Gate House 
Room one is kind of the big open area. Room two now here is the mausoleum that they can go and check out uh, and fight some stuff in there and maybe get some treasure. Uh, I also rolled, uh, there are no factions on this level either. There's also a chance per level to see, uh, you can roll to see if there are any factions going to show up there. And not this time. So cool. Uh, I hope it was interesting to someone to watch this go through because that was a pretty simple room. Uh, but I think that's what's kind of fun about Dungeon 23 is how quickly you can kind of just pump this stuff out, especially using the weird framework where I've got a lot of this stuff uh, already done and prepped and I can just start rolling and start building very quickly. I don't have to um, think too much, uh, or at least I get the seed of the idea ready and going. Um, so when is a weird dungeon coming out? We're looking at uh, sometime Q1, uh, hopefully sooner. It's just when I get the illustrations done and can get this thing really laid out and looking nice. So if you're interested in weird dungeon, keep watching this uh, channel and as we do updates, and of course I'll announce when that's released. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.